Wonder why. I don't understand. Who would want a disc that was big as big as a record, but was only available in a disc laser disc player? Anyway, brilliant idea. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> okay. Are we? You, are you ready? Are we? Are I we, think I'm ready. Are we done with pre-showing? We ready to, to dive into this gig? <laughs> I think we can. Okay. All right, let's get up to this. Get into these gigs. Oh. Well, with that being said, I guess we should get the show on the road. I mean, it is the whole point of why we're here together, right? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. How about I take my mute off first? Let's try that again. <laughs> take two. <laughs> Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Thursday, <laughs> April 16th, 2020, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, Season 12, Episode Number 7, Madonna, the Unauthorized Rusical. In case you did not know, my name is Gary, with me is my co-star hostess. Hello, everyone, it's Damon. Hi. And this week, the reason why I'm so screwed up is we are joined by extra special guest host, Q. Yay! Hello there. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm excited to talk about all, get into all this gaggery. All this gaggery. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know, Q is a longtime <laughs> lover of COL Drag Race. And the Q does mm -hmm. not stand for Miss Quarantine, just for the record. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're super yeah, so my yeah, yeah. so uh, I go I go by Q, but you know my room is Michael 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 Q. Call me whatever you want, just call me, just call me. <laughs> Operators are waiting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen ninety nine a minute, bitch. That's how that works. <laughs> oh. oh well. We are we are we're already gonna have a lot of fun tonight. Let's just put it out there right now. That's so All true. Right. So true. All right, so let's get into discussing the first uh section, shall we? Yes, honey, put the pedal to the metal and don't stop. <laughs> All right, maxi <laughs> challenge this week. No mini challenge. Why does there need to be a mini challenge? Because it's a motherfucking rusical. All right, before we get into this, I just want to say this. <clears throat> Not original, but here we are. Let's have the girls sing and... Do a jukebox karaoke something something, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this time we decided to do Madge. It's mm -hmm. season twelve. Some have already criticized it's a little late to be doing this. It's season twelve. Just say it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so Rue comes in. She announces that it's going to be you know Madonna the Rusical and uh, plot twist question mark they have to select amongst themselves who's going to get what role mm -hmm. so none of this shenaniganery about well you because you're the best or you won last time or you're oldest or you got the biggest dick or however they decide to like split them uh -huh. up and give someone responsibility <laughs> everybody has to decide and there's a little i don't want and i'm not sure which is weird amongst, what is it, just like two of them. And everybody else was like, I know what I like. And mm -hmm. Widow Von Du, one of the talking heads of the season, is like, bitch, I got what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> she was very happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. She, yep. she, she I, I, something tells me she likes to rub it in. 
So <laughs> that being said, uh, Damon, why don't you start us off with uh, what were your thoughts on the Rusical? <laughs> so I put our material girl. Oh. Kind of go with the theme. Go with the theme. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Madonna wrote a song like that. Yeah, anyway, anyway, or maybe she didn't write it. Whatever, I don't care. Whoever. Um, but like my big thing about this one was just about um, we've seen this before. We know how this goes. Um, the twist, I think, were a little about like like you're sing they're singing it because in the past they've had musicals, but it's been basically whoever they hired to sing the root the musical our musical, and then the girls kind of lip sync to it. At this time, they actually had to sing it, which we learned there are some not-so-great singers in, in this group. Like, this this group would, would, would not make it in the in the RuPaul musical version. Like, that is, this is, this is not a very vocally talented um, <laughs> Um, group of girls this year, this season. There are a couple, and I think kind of the maybe pin, you know, add on to it. You had some that were very, very good. You've got your Jan, you've got your paid to say Britta in some ways. You know, you've got your musically trained girls, but <sighs> there are a lot of mm, just nasty. <laughs> My, my, my. Nasty vocals. So, yeah. I just realized what I've done to myself. I am hosting a podcast tonight with two beautiful men of color who also are creative artists and can sing. And we're going to talk about the singing episode. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but, yeah, that's kind of my thing. Like, the material was very... It worked, and I liked it. We've done this before. Would I have liked it better if they had had, like, actual people singing the music? Probably. I hate to be that person, but I think I would have liked it better if it had been a... Like the like the Kim Kardashian, the Kardashian musical that they did, like, season eight or nine, I think. You know, one of those things. I would have probably liked that more because it would have given the opportunity for the queens to kind of shine like visually or 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 what or what not so and do the choreography and stuff but that's just me mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> all right q as our guest what were your thoughts um well for me the 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 song that I thought about was, of course, Get Into the Groove. And I feel like that's just because there were a number of girls who I felt like got, like, the essence of Madonna. And um, whether they could sing or dance, I feel like they really, really channeled Madonna uh, in their in their performances. Um, and then there were some girls who just, who just, I felt like, weren't able to, or maybe don't know how to really channel Madonna, you know? Um, and so in their specific era, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, for me, that was the, the biggest thing that really jumped out um, was that I just kind of, there were two kind of categories of girls, you know? So there's some girls that were not only channeling Madonna, but then also um, really were able to really do well in the performance overall. Um, and so, uh, but some, I feel like just, weren't able to and I feel like that's a skill you know it's a skill to be able to really channel Madonna um, mm -hmm. and so the Rusicals are really interesting because they're like the one I think last year in season 11 I think was uh, Cher I think um, mm -hmm. and so uh, or not last year maybe two years ago yeah it was so I remember it was yeah season. season 10 so it's interesting because there are some Rusicals that are like you take all of the songs of a um, of an actress, like that was all of like there. It was basically the story of Cher. They were mm -hmm. talking about the story of Cher. Then they had different songs, and this is similar with Madonna. You take kind of one well-known person or uh, entertainer and go through their pieces. Um, but all of the musicals haven't really been that way. They haven't been a journey through someone's life. So um, 
it's interesting. So it's interesting to see a rusticle that kind of takes an artist and, je- and journeys through their life. Um, and for me, I feel like as a drag queen, that would be easier to hold on to. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easier to act, I think, and to perform if you know like a genre um, versus like random like Broadway actors or whoever they have to to sing and you have to lip sync over them mm-hmm. in, in a in a non linear musical. So for me, I would actually prefer this type of uh, okay. storytelling. So, um, but uh, but but overall. Yeah, two distinct different groups who I think were able to or not able to hone in on the spirit of Madonna. Yeah. I can okay. see that. Yeah. What about you, Gary? Uh, so I agree. Like, I kind of feel like there's two things. There's Don't Tell Me, which is, the like, I agree with you, Q. Like, I think those are the girls that knew what they were doing. Like, Jan clearly mm-hmm. understood what you know she was going to do um how to vision is talented can sing can dance like mm-hmm. total package uh the rest of the girls for the most part were a little iffy um like singing dancing Gigi almost had a meltdown uh mm-hmm. crystal had to be space weirdo hippie madonna what else could she be like (laughs) it's not typecasting it's a perfect match like yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah i was like okay like it's it's interesting so i mean there was there was some that you know uh, there was that and then my other thought was bitch it's madonna so for those of you kids that don't know there is a famous club dance song that's literally called bitch it's madonna which is a pirate answering machine, either answering machine or voicemail message of literally saying, bitch, it's Madonna. And then that's like the main like track that gets played over and over again. <laughs> I oh, actually God. love that song. It's very fun. <laughs> um, but so like I was di- kind of disappointed that like I think too many of the girls thought they knew Madonna but really weren't character studied or didn't like, I think, I don't want to say take it seriously, but like it was, it was kind of like, well, is this the junior high variety show? Is this like, like senior year repertoire? Is this like, you know, college? (laughs) I see that David. (laughs) Is this college, you know, like, theater you know audition like i mean it was like it just it it was all right but it felt a little subpar and and i agree with you q that you know this is it's a retrospective musical and yeah um i listened to race chaser with willem in alaska and willem calls it out and says like yeah we did the one with the share he's like but this doesn't really feel like a rusical like like there have been some better ones where it was like more uh not, I want to say cohesive, but more original, like in terms of like the content of what they are putting together. Mm-hmm. Um, like the, mm. like the Kim Kardashian, um, you know, tribute line mm-hmm. where Alexis was, you know, um, with that great role. I mean, it's like, I, I think that like, there are some things that are a little bit more memorable, but it was, I mean, I, I, overall, honestly, it was good. I'm surprised by how many people online are being like, Oh my God, it was really good. And I was like, well, I'll give you this. It wasn't mm. a disaster. So if your measurement is by like shit shows, the guess it was not a shit show. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like everybody came out and they did right. their thing. Um, you know, Jackie was the one that made me the most nervous because I could see that she was nervous. So, uh, you know, I, she did okay. Um, she who shall not be named, uh, you know, did reasonable. <laughs> um, she kind of, I think by some people online got, a, got read about the outfit, which I was like, well, word is that they were given those outfits. They didn't have to bring them because they didn't know what role they were going to play, you know? So like, yeah. So I think there was kind of oh, like yeah. two, well, that's true. I think there yeah. was kind of two groupings, you know, like some who really kind of knew what the hell they were doing and others not so much and i'm just gonna call it out i don't think britta knew what she was doing 
Like she she fought she wanted Cone Madonna. But then she fought for that role. <laughs> mm-hmm. And as we've seen this narrative over and over and over again in the season, sometimes when you fight really hard for something, you you don't do well at that something. <laughs> but she yeah, but I, I agree. But I, but, I but I don't understand. She's from <laughs> she's from she's from. I don't know. Oh, where does she say she's from? All the time and every. She's fucking like episode. salsa, honey. Oh, he's from New York. <laughs> New he's York City. New York. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, I I love that she wants to rep her city, but it 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 doesn't get it doesn't go in your favor when uh, people in your city are like Britta, who you know. I mean, she's not at least from my friends that live in New York City now. They're like they've heard of her, but she's not like what. Um, Bianca Del Brio was, or what? Who mm-hmm. Bob was? Like there are certain people who the queens knew, mm-hmm. you know. So she's not really that girl. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely agree, Gary. Also, that she was one of the girls that just didn't capture the essence of Madonna, and I feel like she just, you know, she has that wide mouth Jennifer Holiday thing always happening. So many memes online <laughs> showing like these uh-huh. wide. Out these wide mouths uh, representing Britta, and um, mm-hmm. she uh, she's one of the girls. So I feel like just didn't capture the essence. Like yeah. so, one person that hasn't really been talked about a lot that I loved was Jada, um, because mm. I thought that she I thought she killed it. Not only with her representation of Madonna being super sexy and all that black, and just like touching all the men's, but she also. <laughs> It was really her voice as well. She's not a singer. She knows she's not a singer. But she had this really sultry voice that really went along with the story. So mm-hmm. I thought she really nailed it. And I was surprised she wasn't in the top. Like, um, I didn't think she should have, um, I don't think she should have won, but I think that mm-hmm. she, she was one of the best for me. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I agree. I was a little thrown off by how when they went to record with Michelle, Michelle had to talk to Jada about how to be sexy. Like, like, girl, do you not understand? Like, this is justify my love. Like, you know, this is, this is erotica. This is that this is that that era when she was like, oh, so naughty. Like, oh, my God. Like, no one like like it was the whole big thing where now we look at that now. I'm kind of like, oh, whatever. You know, like, well, I remember like when that came out, I mean, it was like, like, I thought there was concern by like uh, parents or whatever that it was mm-hmm. just going to be an orgy on stage, you know, when you went and saw her, you know, that she was going to be, you know, turning the microphone into a dildo or something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, who is to say? Uh, so, yeah, like I was, I, I was kind of surprised that Michelle had to be like, you know, come on, girl, you know, like. But then you're right. Like Jada got it. Like she mm-hmm. she did an excellent recording, and then she came out and she delivered it. The um, riding crop. I had to think for a moment because mm-hmm. I was gonna call it a whip, and I'm like, it's not a whip, even though she says whip smart, but she's not whipping. It's a crop, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> when you know your kink and other people don't, anyways. Yeah. So, but I mean, like, I thought that was a great like theatrical like cute secret crafty moment you know she reaches down like like she's grabbing his junk and i was like oh my and then i was like what the because she was like Whoosh! and i was like <laughs> i see what you did there but no mm-hmm. i mean she, she really really delivered it like i it, that portion of the musical number was definitively like burlesque strip tease like put a quarter in the slot at the adult theater, like to see the peep show kind of like concept, which is what it's supposed to be. Like, you know, you're supposed to be titillated by it. So I agree Q, you uh, that, you know, she, she really, she really kind of brought it forward for the number. So, yeah. And I, so from, I mean, I will say that I am a super fan of Jan. I'm a super fan of hers because uh, even more so after I found out that she, um, not only likes theater, but she went to school. She went to the Boston Conservatory. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is um, definitively one of like the top three musical theater schools in the country. 
Uh, and one of those three being uh, in Cincinnati. CCM is also an amazing school that mm -hmm. pumps out like insanely talented musical theater kids. And the Boston Conservatory is also one of those schools. So no wonder she's a fucking beast. I mean, she, like that first episode where she like had her little bit where she hit that high note at the end um, of that uh, main stage challenge. I was just like, oh, this bitch can really sing. And then you find out she has some of the best training in the United mm -hmm. States. So um, she, she's, I'm definitively Jan. Um, I think she's amazing. Yeah. So. Uh, and she is really, uh, I hate to use these words, but it's all that comes to mind, well-rounded, like theatrical, artistic, creative, a jock, a queen, like she needs to work on her boy brows. But I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, like I, confessional, I'm like, girl, even or when they start each at, like day and she comes into the room and I'm like, they're too perfect. Like, and they're a little girl. on the thinner side, like, mm. I don't think Jan knows what her eyebrows even look like anymore. Like, they're probably so long gone, you know, and that's why she's just like, she's like, what? It's a boy brow. <laughs> it's not a drag brow. Well, yes, technically it's not a drag brow, but that doesn't make it a boy brow. Like... <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, she um, she's definitely uh, multi-talented, which we'll get yeah. to more of that later because I'm sure we have lots to say about that. Yeah. Are we ready to move on to the next segment? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gentlemen, start your engines and may the best woman win. All right. Stop the runway, children. It's time to show off. And the category is Night of a Thousand Michelle Visages. Woo! I. <laughs> yeah. So, again, <laughs> it's season 12. It took us till now to do this. And apparently Michelle was not told in advance. Like, her reaction when it is announced is literally when she found out what it was. Nice. And I was like, that's interesting that they, like, that nobody spoiled it at all. Like, nobody... You know, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we got your birthday cake and nobody's saying nothing until it appears. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the concept is all of the queens have to dress like Michelle Visage from a photograph, apparently, that is available online at some point throughout her career. Mm hmm. Because, <laughs> girl, there were some questionable photos. Whew. HD was not a thing back in the day. No. Let's put it that way. Let's put it like that. <laughs> Wasn't even standard definition. I don't know what it was. I mean, we're not talking eight bit pixel, but come on. Uh, that being said, Damon, what were your thoughts on the uh, the runway? So I will say, like, pretty much, like it was such a fun idea. Like, I think it was, you know, it's you know one of those ones that we've seen, they've done this before with the Night of a Thousand Madonnas, and as you know or don't know, and just for the audience as well, back in the day. Like Michelle Visage was pretty much like a Madonna impersonator, and she was a part of the oh god her her group name just left my head Soul System. Thank you, Soul System. <laughs> when she, you know, when she, God words anyway. It's okay. When she was a part of that group, um, like that was you know kind of her thing was mm -hmm. like she was a she looked a little like Madonna kind of thing, and I thought it was kind of cool that they kind of swapped it because they've done the Night of a Thousand Madonnas. Like a couple of times. Yeah. Like I said, a well, couple of times. Because we had Kimono Gate. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the other thing. <laughs> and that's the other <laughs> thing. The best part of this one, there were no duplicates. No, there there were not. There were there were no duplicates. There, there were, were no there were some <clears throat> definitive era like Mm -hmm. couple, there was a couple of queens from one era. There were a couple of queens from another distinct era, like almost the uh -huh. same like year episode something, like a little, a little too close yeah. maybe, but yeah. yeah. I was happy for it. I liked it. Uh, Q, what did you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought that I love. Yeah, I love this idea, and uh, like we're basically all saying, I'm surprised that this is that it happened so late. 
I mean, Michelle is known for having these, you know, really uh, some quirky looks, some that are really kind of iconic looks, maybe wearing chains that have letters on them. And so <laughs> I think that th it only makes sense, you know. Um, you know, uh, Michelle's looks are just as a topic of conversation as ruse, you know, whenever they're in on the judging panel. So, yeah, it was interesting to see the choices that the queens made because some were super obscure. Like, I didn't know where Heidi's came from. Mm. I still don't re really remember what it... I don't know anything... I, you know, I'm not like a super fan of Michelle Visage, so maybe insiders know, but I, there's some I definitely remember. I definitely remembered Jan's look that she had with the pink uh, kind of flight attendant like thing. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely remember that. I remember, um, uh, uh, I think Jada was the one who had the icon or the word, yeah, the chain. Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. There's some I definitely remember. Um, I think I remember Gigi's because it came from, um, I remember Madonna like basically not having any clothes on um, and like that light green. Um, so, uh, but I love the idea. I mean, I think it's perfect. And and the fact that somebody was able to hide it from Michelle, I think is really, um, like I'm interested to know whether they, if they told her that the runway was going to be something else, mm. then it came out with that. Or if they just said, uh, we can't tell you. You know, it's like, you know, just, I, you know, you know who knows? Um, but oh, uh, or she might have just she might have just thought that it was another like another Madonna runway. Like like third time's a charm. Like you bitches better get it right. Like we've we've done it twice before. Now's your time to shine. I would have actually liked yeah. that mm. as well. But it was it was. Well, oh, I was gonna say it's just yeah it's it was really nice to to see that surprise look on Michelle's face. I mean, I'm sure she was super flattered. Um, so that was fun. Yeah. Gary, how about you? Um, yeah, so I I said way overdue. Like, it's season 12. And the bitch has been around since, what, season four? Something like that. Right, so she's been, like, eight seasons plus the All-Stars um you know she's been involved for so so long uh and so i was like i feel like i, I just this kind of homage stuff to michelle i feel like and i don't know why would have been more appropriate in the anniversary year like in in year 10 like i think that would have been a little bit more understandable like in year 10 it might have been too schmaltzy for people but it would have made more sense that we did a lot of tribute stuff you know what I mean? So, like, a lot of the older queens that, you know, had first been on, a lot of the older judges come back. I mean, just, like, like to me, that would have been more appropriate. So, instead, we get to year 12, and then we decide to do the Michelle stuff. Um, So, I agree with you, Q. Like, the some of the references were a little obscure. I thought the one that was obscure was Widow Von Do. Or, in this case, <laughs> Widow Von Don't. Because, girl. Like... She got critiqued on something, and I think it was Bob the Drag Queen, maybe? Or no, uh, Miss Cracker? Miss Cracker said on Review with a Jew that she wore her promo outfit, and that's like a no-no or whatever. And I was like, record scratch? I was like, hold up. Like, <laughs> did she really wear her? And then I had to go back and look, and I was like, no, girl, it is not the promo look, because the promo look is problematic. This just is not good, but the promo thing had this weird, like, white kind of, like, uh, bracer harness something or other with like blue and red uh, I think the top part was red and the pants were blue the hot pants were blue anyways mm -hmm. like I, I get that I'm trying to find it now yeah I get that there's some similarity but yeah. so they put the picture of a Michelle and they put the picture of a Widow Von Du and I was like okay I will give you props for straight red hair parted like you know that it, you know you got a little rootage going on but Girl, like, I don't think you're supposed to, like, it's an homage to Michelle. Drag it up. Like, you look like you sausage casing fit yourself into that top in the pants. And I'm like, I understand that you're a bigger girl, but come on. Like, I just. Mm -hmm. I just. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think that uh, it, it didn't. Um, it didn't make her look good. Yeah. Um, 
No. Yeah. So it, it was. Yeah. It was. It was really unfortunate. Um, yeah. And so I would have. Yeah. I mean, I, I. I don't know what look I would have wanted her in, but um, I. I just wouldn't have chosen that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was. And then uh, to the one about Heidi. So Heidi's outfit was even a surprise to Michelle and Rue because it's a still photo from a production of a TV show that Michelle Guest like starred on in the UK. So it's like a drama or something or a comedy. Like she was only in, I think like one episode or something like, so it, it was a really a far reach, but that's what cracks me up about it because these queens were like, well, I think this is fun. Or I kind of like, look this look. And like, uh, that's their reasoning as to why they picked it. And Heidi was like, what? I liked it. It was something different, you know? And she wanted to be able to have fun with hair. So I was like, okay, like, I'm not mad about it. I'm a little more <clears throat> bothered by the fact that it isn't a, as authentic a match as some of the other girls did. Mm. And the judging is inconsistent for me because it's like, all right, it's a night of a thousand Madonnas, like, or sorry, Michelle Visages. So are you supposed to be a duplicate copy of Michelle or are you supposed to be giving Michelle but with your own take? Mm. I agree thought. because they, yeah, because they, well, they knocked Britta on not having like the same earrings um, as I guess Michelle had in her original picture. They kept getting on her about her earrings. Girl. Um, well, all but, right. So... But I went, but I went back and I was like, they're actually out of all of the girls. I mean, as far as I can see in reference to the picture, the still photo that they had as the girls were walking down the runway. Um, only Crystal Methad was the only one that I saw that had earrings that looked just like Michelle's. So either in the still photo, you couldn't see her ears, so you don't know what earrings she was wearing, um, or they were wearing different earrings. So it was just weird that they were so nitpicky with Britta about her earrings. All right, so I, I completely disagree. Britta did it to herself. Why? Because you wore an iconic outfit, and bitch, there is nothing to this outfit. It is a blue velvet gown that is structured. You got it perfectly right. The only thing they can do is look at the accessories. So they got to look at your shoes. They got to look at your glasses. They got to look at your hair. And they got to look at your fucking earrings because she didn't wear any jewelry with that outfit hardly. And no offense, you're wearing it right in front of Michelle. And Michelle wore that outfit and she picked that outfit. So, of course, she knows because it just happened a couple years ago how specific <laughs> that outfit was. And that's where I was like, well, you deserve that criticism. No offense. You could have picked <laughs> something for when she was like 20 and gotten away with murder because she old and she can't quite remember. And if you make it look better, she ain't going to complain. I just think, I honestly will say like that was, I'm like, I know they're kind of being nitpicky about it. And they were being kind of nit. Well, Michelle was being more nitpicky about it than anything else. But I was like, um, it's a, it's a, it's a earring. Like, couldn't have been, could it, I mean, could, could she have done something draggy with it? For sure. Something like to match the dress a little bit more, something big and, and whatever, but like, it's a fucking earring. So but here's, whatever. here's why I say that Britta deserved it because Miss Hall looked kind of like Michelle, but if you see the side-by-side, -side, she did not get it right. No. She was in the arena. She was kind of close, but it was not a spot-on duplication. Like, Correct. the shoulders were not right. The hair was not right. Like, the icon um, necklace was not correct. Like, on, on Miss Hall, it was huge. Like, to go with mm -hmm. her huge boobs. And I'm like, yeah, but in the actual photo, like, Michelle looks more trashy. Like, <laughs> Like Atlantic City, like West, like East Coast kind of like Jersey trashy, and you're not like, like you know, yeah. you're looking, you're looking like a cousin to Michelle. If you're really going to be that critical, my point is that was a while ago. Like that was that was almost like season one Vaseline filter rude. Like, <laughs> like so that's got to be like probably season four, the very first season Michelle was on, I think. No. So we're talking like eight years ago. So that's where in my mind, I'm like, yeah, if you go for something farther away, you don't get criticized as much. If you go for something that has a lot of busy shit, you don't get criticized as much. Like, I liked what Crystal did 
but I hated that hair. I was like, what is that? What, what is that business? What is that mess? I don't understand. That is not Michelle's hair from that like promo shoot. Like, <laughs> I just no. It was kind of like Pippi Longstocking let her hair down. I was so confused. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't like her hair. Uh, um, the hair was weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I. I mean, in general, I'm glad. That, yeah, I'm glad that they finally did this. But yeah, it was really. It was just really, it, I think it's really a good um, question to ask in terms of, are they, like, embodying Michelle? Like, are they, are the outfits supposed to be, like, exactly like hers? And they're, like, walking like her? They're being her? Or is it a, their individual take on Michelle? Is it them bringing the best of themselves, but, like, through, a, like, a Michelle Visage, like, mm. you know, exterior? So, yeah, that wasn't really specified either. So I have no idea. Well, I mean, and then, and and Michelle's role as a judge is always to be more nitpicky and to be more critical. I mean, look at what happened with, like, Jersey Justice, where they're, like, duplicating those judge shows for, like, dramedy's sake. And I remember one of the criticisms from Michelle was about the animal print. And people at the time were like, seriously? Like, you're focusing on the animal print? And Michelle, like, took it very seriously. Like, you betcha, bitch. Like, you, and I was just kind of like, okay. Like, I, so I, I'm not surprised that, you know, she had some criticisms the way she did. Um, and to be fair, uh, I didn't mind the fact that she was going to give Britta some criticism. <clears throat> Anyways. We'll get into that a little bit more later, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to move on? Let's. <laughs> yeah. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck and don't fuck it up. Famous words from the Queen Mother herself. So, it's the lip sync for your life, children. The bottom two are Heidi and Britta. Oh. <laughs> Look at you being shocked. Mm. <laughs> um, Gas. Gas. All right. So, uh, <laughs> let me ask you before we get into our thoughts, like just in general, do y'all agree with Heidi being in the bottom? Okay, so I, I went through and I looked at the Roosical like two or three times. Like I was able to watch the episode live. I watched it live and then I'm like, okay, let me look at the Roosical and see what's going on. So, and runway and all that stuff. And in comparison, like not everyone was good. I will put it like that. We, we know that. There, there are some great moments. There are some low points too. But if I were to compare everyone kind of down the line, hers wasn't the greatest. I didn't see Madonna really at all. But on that same token, mm -hmm. she got, and I'm going to admit, say this right now, she got the worst Madonna. Mm. She got current Madonna, or five, ten years ago Madonna, whatever you want to call it. She got the Madonna that is now that to be perfectly blunt and honest, like a lot of people have kind of like, oh, maybe forgotten a little bit. Like, oh, Madonna's still performing. That that's that's great. Mm -hmm. She's still putting music out there. That's nice. You know, it was kind of that like that. I so like this. I'll put it like this. A lot of the other girls had very iconic Madonna like looks and feels and 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 whatnot. I didn't recognize Madonna's look until recently, like literally after the episode aired. Mm. So, so she kind of got like the 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 what she wanted. By the way, just just to put it out there, it was the one she wanted, but she got the one that is not so. Yep, I don't care. I call it shade. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the one she wanted, and it wasn't the greatest. And and it, it was in comparison to everyone else. I, I didn't see Madonna when she was dancing. I saw Heidi. Mm. I saw a lot of Heidi. I saw I could see Heidi in that outfit. I could see Heidi doing that performance. Nothing about it screamed Madonna to me. I, I think that's fair, and I think you're right that of all the Madonna roles, that was the least iconic of Madonna and probably the most difficult. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's a part of me that's like, where's Frozen? Mm-hmm. Like, Ray of Light, Frozen? Hello? Like, one of the best dance albums that every faggot, like, shook their ass to, like, in the club? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, I just, yeah. I was like, um, cause you know, the bitch would have come out in metallic blue, you know, with the, with the blonde curly, like kind of stringy hair and, you know, metallics on the face and, you know, and probably, yeah. and probably pulled some mm-hmm. stunt if they could figure out how to like have an orb in their hand and have it glow, you know, and anyways, yeah. anyways, anyways, anyways. Yeah. 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 It just like, I felt that, that Madonna, like this particular Madonna was not of in comparison to everything else. And then when you compare her runway, it was a I'm going to say this. It was a stretch. Mm. It was a stretch. Like, you know, she took a picture from, like you said, a still from her on a TV show where she guest appeared in what, London or whatever fuck ever. Right. You know, that is so far down the the totem pole of iconic uh, Michelle Visage looks. Well, to be fair though, I don't know if the if the request or the requirement was to have an iconic Michelle Visage look, because Lord knows Widow Von Du was not wearing an iconic <laughs> Michelle Visage look. I don't recall the the span dangled Wonder Woman wannabe. As an iconic Michelle Visage look, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so yeah. That being said, uh, the song is "Burning Up" by Madonna. Thank you for filling that in, Damon. Because You're welcome, honey. I couldn't remember what the song was. <laughs> I just remembered it because I love it. See, I don't mind it. So what album, do we know what album this is off of? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember wait, which wait album. Give me one second. I Burning up. I'm trying Madonna. To <laughs> I'm wondering if it's off of um, the, damn it. What the hell was the name of that album? It's from the actually. It's from the very. Old, it's one of her. It's from her very first. Al- it's from her nineteen eighty three album, Madonna. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, oh I, I didn't know it was from the first one. I knew that it was pretty early. No, see, yep, and that's was. not that's not the album I was thinking of then, and I can't yeah, remember what the name of the one is that I'm. So, thank you, Wikipedia. You are a friend to me. Um, <laughs> Burning Up is a song by American singer Madonna from her 1983, epi- oh, God, words, eponymous album, debut album. Yeah. I thought it was from music. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That. That's, I yeah, thought that's it was from the later. urban cowboy, like, mm-hmm. that kind of mm-hmm. hip-hop mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was from that one. So it came out before Holiday. Oh. Okay. Okay. So now you know. Yeah, I knew that it was <laughs> super early. I, I yeah, I thought it was in that Holiday Material Girl, like in that kind of. Yeah, I thought it was pretty early. I didn't realize it was from her first album, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that one. So, uh. Yeah, that being said, so that was the song that they, so they got it right. If you're going to do an unauthorized musical about a gay icon, like celebrity entertainer, you better have that bitch's like, you know, song, one of the songs uh, for the lip sync. So they do. Um, and Damon, what did you think of the lip sync? <laughs> 
too much. It was like just, and I'm gonna put it like there. I, it just was too, too much. Like too long. Like too much. Too long. Too much for the people. Like they gave too much. <laughs> like oh, okay. <laughs> Like that makes sense. I know this is lifting for your life. I know this is like you're giving your, you know, you got to give your all. But I feel like, like, there was just, there was a lot of, there was a lot of ham on that fucking stage. Oh, girl, uh -oh. it was, it was goddamn Easter Sunday. Yes, scallop potatoes <laughs> on the side, honey. So much ham, yeah. like being being so much served up. Ham on the stage, and I just was not. I, I was, I was, I just put it like this. I knew within like the first like 10, 15 seconds who was going home. Mm. Because it was so just like over, oh, just like over, I was over it. Mm. I was over like all the like, like I said, all the like just like there's a, there's a, so, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, and all in between. Uh, um, it's a lip sync for your life. I get that. I understand that. You all understand that. I'm sure you both do. Yeah, I'm sure. But there's there's a there's a method to this. There's a there's a there's a there's a a little subtlety that needs to kind of flavor this 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 kind of thing. I understand going all out. And I've talked about this before, like with the lip sync for your whatever they call it in the beginning, you know, the first episodes where no one went home mm -hmm. about, you know, putting all your cards out on the table. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a, you know, be a little more subtle. This song did not need all of this. It needed something just a little bit more nuanced. It needed, it needed Madonna. Like, Madonna is great when she has her backup dancers and all the people doing all the same choreography. That's, like, amazing. But imagine Madonna doing all of that by herself. Mm. Like, just doing all of this stuff and, and everything. And it just would have been, like, just raw. Like, like I said, like ham and, and eggs and, and bacon and... and <laughs> Just like I'm, ooh, I'm getting hungry. I was gonna say, girl, you gonna make you gonna make us want to go to the kitchen and raid and get something to eat now. Did you have dinner? I haven't had dinner yet. See, that's what it is. <laughs> there it is. What I what I hear from you, bitch. What I hear from you is, you want Beans, less. <laughs> what I hear from you is, you want less emerald, bam, and yeah. more like kind of like. Like subtleness, like appropriate yeah. seasoning level. Yes, like we don't have to throw the whole thing of, of Tabasco into the into the into the thing. Just like drop some drops, give us a little something. Like we just need to taste it, just a little. Yeah, maybe a little more because it's ellipsing for your life. But like, mm, damn, that was it was just. <sighs> That's how I felt. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> now, that, now that we've talked about food uh, and we're hungry, it. Q, what were your thoughts on the, the, on the, the feelings? So many feelings. I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking IHOP right now. No, but um, <laughs> um, I really, yeah, and I, I, I want to really piggyback, piggyback off, uh, off of what Damon was saying. I think that um, for me, when I watch lip syncs, I like to see connection. Like connection with the words and that really come out through whatever you're singing. A slow song, fast song, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And it's always weird when you see a drag queen doing like a plus three or plus four on a song that really is more of like a, you know, a song that she's just being a little too extra. And so this song lends itself to being dancey, but I feel like Britta wasn't really connecting to the song. So like, whenever I'd see her, it's like her mouth, she's been, people have been doing all the memes with her mouth being too wide and stuff. And that's, it's, this was one of those things. It was like, it was just too much. And I feel mm -hmm. like she wasn't really connecting to the words. And I, um, I liked Heidi's interpretation because I felt like whenever she, 
during her lip sync, I really felt like I was connecting what she was saying. I was belie I believed her, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to tip Heidi. Like, if they were both at a club, you know, at the same time, I would make sure that I would mosey on over the Heidi side to give her a dollar because I was she was just more engaged in her piece, you know? And that's who Heidi is as a person. It's like, this lip sync really describes who they are or mm -hmm. what they how they've been represented on the show. Like, Britta's been represented as this very in-your-face, too-much New York girl who's, like, out of touch, you know, with reality. And then you have Heidi, who is a super fun-loving, super attached, lovable girl that is easy to relate to. And I feel like this, this lip sync was just, like, a microcosm of how they've been presented on the show, you know? And so, for me, yeah, I was pretty clear from close to the beginning of the lip sync, who I wanted to stay. And mm -hmm. um, I do I do think that Heidi should have been in the bottom two, for sure. Okay. Um, I think that Heidi, uh, while I talk about how Britta is someone who I feel like is kind of this out of touch, like I'm from New York, I'm more, I think I'm more than what I actually am. Okay. Heidi has some of that too. Like Heidi has um, not the not the higher than not the holier than thou. She has the out of touch element. So I feel like with um, her Madonna, I feel like she wasn't really able to capture the essence of Madonna. And I feel like in some of the um, challenges, she's a person who she's charismatic, and so she is fun to look at. But I always feel like it's hard for her to really like hone in on like the essence. Mm -hmm. Like she's bringing Heidi in everything she does. And so I think it's hard for her to not be Heidi. So mm. there are some circumstances when that will hurt her, when she has to be someone else, she doesn't know how to be anyone else. So I think that, mm -hmm. that that's one of her downfalls, not being able to like get into like the skin of Madonna or any of these a couple of the acting challenges, not really honing in on someone else. So, She's so wonderful and charismatic as who she is. Okay, I hear you, and I will, I will, I, I that, see you, and I will, sense? I will, I will uh, up you this. Bianca Del Rio, Sharon Needles, I think are two queens who have gone on and won that also face the same difficulty to mm -hmm. not be themselves because that's all they know how to be. Like they mm -hmm. were so developed in terms of personality, perhaps with more experience than Heidi at this point, but like, like, you know, it, that's just what they do. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not trying to debate you. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing because like like they said on the show, she just oozes charisma. Like, she is everybody's mm -hmm. good time gal. Like, I want to do shots with her. I want I want to take that bitch after the show, while she's still in full face in an outfit to a goddamn Waffle House. I will pay for her meal. <laughs> we will like you know sneak in a, a flask bottle under the table and be drunk at a Waffle Ho at four in the morning because. She is going to be fun. Like, mm -hmm. so I feel that like that. That's, you know, and so mm -hmm. I think that might have been part of the judging decision. Like, mm -hmm. like there's a, there's been criticism for many years that they are editing the show while they're producing the show, like that they are making some decisions because there's been shenanigans called about last minute changes to the song for the lip sync and some other stuff like you know that it seems evident who's going to go when in fact something kind of doesn't go a certain way or whatever mm, mm. So, interesting yeah interesting yeah so, Heidi is awesome I mean I love her she she's so lovable I mean from like the very first episode I loved her and even in the untucks when she was like you know what fuck you fuck you fuck you it's like yes I yes, fucking love that. You know? I don't. I don't like she. <laughs> yeah, I I love her. I just love. It's like you know she could have been edited as a villain in that untucked, but it was like no, she's so lovable that everyone completely agrees with her because she's awesome. Yep. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> so when it came to the lip sync, I kind of had some thoughts. Uh, and it was know your space and your audience. <laughs> now, Damon, if you recall in CAL Drag Race history, we, you and I, girlfriend, we have had this discussion before. And we got really motherfucking goddamn close to the fighting over the square inch footage of the stage issue because if you recall when it was all stars we were getting hell-bent and super pissy about manila monopolizing the stage yes and like front of the stage bullshit that she used to do right and i felt britta was kind of doing that a little and there was a moment where i thought there was going to be a collision so I, mm-hmm. that's what I mean by like, know your space. Like, and, mm-hmm. and I've known this forever. Like I've seen many, many drag queens perform. Sometimes it's a beautiful choreographed number. Bravo for you, honey. I'm glad that somebody was willing to like put some moves together for you for free. So mm-hmm. like, you know, you see that shit at the club <laughs> or whatever. But in this case, I was like, I've also seen like competition type stuff where it's like, you know, they got to do things side by side. You need to know your 360. Like, because the last thing you want to do is to be that bitch that causes the other one to literally break a leg. Like, mm-hmm. no, no, nay, nay. Like, that's not what we're going to do here. <laughs> so that was that was one of my issues about knowing your space. Also know your audience. I get that you're playing to the judges, but it's like, what, what are you, what are you doing? Like, and I saw a little bit from Heidi to Britta, a lot from Britta to Heidi, like upsmanship. Like, oh, you're doing mm-hmm. this thing and I'm 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 going to outperform you. We're doing this thing a lot, Mr. York. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Somebody strap them wings down on that bitch. Or she takes flight. <laughs> I just with her, I was like, oh my God. All I saw was wide hips, flapping arms, and flapping chiclet teeth. Like, and and God bless Britta because she probably paid a a penny for them teeth, and you cannot help but look at them every single time you see her because they just they're there. They're there. Mm-hmm. They are mm-hmm. fucking there. Mm-hmm. It's the one thing I will. I I I'm. It it just it makes it very difficult. Like I don't know if I could see her live. I'm just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. Like, I just don't know. Like, cause that that just it. That mouth is so big. I feel like it's gonna like drag and she's gonna swallow me. Like, it's just like it's just so like. And 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 the teeth are really right. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Silly bitch. <laughs> like, it is. It's it's just. Mm. It's distracting almost. Yeah. Not almost. <laughs> it's distracting. Period. Like, <laughs> like, like I like she, maybe she flaps flails and flaps her arms over so much because she wants to distract from her face. Like, I don't know. But like <laughs> something's it's happening and it, it bothers me because right of that like there's so much like i said there's so much she's doing right that it and and maybe that's the point like it makes it so you kind of have to look at her yeah well i agree with you that it's distracting like like it visually draws you it also concerns me britta girl from from one msm to another msm honey them's a big old chompers if you're going to get with a man, I don't know how you get past the hurdle of, of scare and concern about your teeth. I'm just saying, if you can pop them bitches out and put them on a nightstand, I got it. No questions asked. There if, it is. But if those teeth don't come out because they're permanent, you know, no poly grip, no dead shoe, nothing like a lot of teeth. It might be veneers. <laughs> now, it looks like veneers. Right. 
but I'm not. I, she's I, definitely I don't know. given me some. Uh, <laughs> I'll say she's definitely given some uh, kind of Audrey two realness, some like little oh. shop of horrors, very <laughs> like you know, feed me Seymour. I mean, now I'm not trying to yuck nobody's yum. If you're into biting, she might be your girl. She could very well be leaving you not beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous, deep, like contusion <laughs> marks on your body that you want. But oh my god, Gary. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> like, <laughs> just stop. <laughs> she might be the Tiger Queen. Oh. <laughs> For those of you in the future, that's a pop culture reference that will probably die quickly and not make any sense. But, right. <laughs> but it's appropriate for now. Yeah, I mean, just... Anyways. God, 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 God. So, uh, let's, just, let's just skip to this part. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Shantae, Heidi stays. Uh, and Brita Sashay is the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about this for uh, before we move on to the next section. Brita goes to sashay away. She actually does well with her. Thank you, judges, for allowing me to be here. Like she holds herself together because I thought she was gonna be a mess. Mm -hmm. She turns around and she starts walking back, and her voice is a little, just little, little wobbly, and you can see that the New York girls are not happy. Mm -hmm. And Jan is a fucking wreck. Mm -hmm. Like, she already went through an emotional roller coaster because, spoiler alert, by the way, if you have not seen the episode, and it is Thursday before the next episode, fuck You're you. Too late. Like, too late. I ain't got time for this. Yeah. She does not win. Untucked was such a bastard edit move. Made it totally come across like she would go and win. And when I go and I watch mm -hmm. the show, because I don't I don't see it live, I see it uh on iTunes recorded, and I get the I get the full version like non-censored. So I get to hear all the swear words. By the way, a lot of swear words this season. Um from the Queens and everything. So I watch the regular episode and then I stop when the judges go to deliberate. Or actually yeah, when the judges go to deliberate, I stop, I switch my app. It's very annoying. Switch to Untucked. Watch Untucked up till right about when they're gonna when they get called to go backstage or go back on the mm -hmm. main stage. I see. Mm -hmm. And then I go back like it's real time, and then I watch the judges like wrap up their critiques and then find out who the two are. Blah 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 blah. So I was like, I are it had already been spoiled for me. Fuck you, Twitter. I love you for the porn, <laughs> but you bitches, like, mm -hmm. not even 24 hours were, like, putting up stills and saying shit. Like, I had a feeling I knew who went home because someone said, we all know who goes home. I just can't wait to see it happen. And I was like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Somebody was on Reddit. <laughs> so. Sometimes the tea is hot. I, <laughs> so. <laughs> you know she uh so i i had a feeling i knew who was going to be in the bottom two i knew probably who was going to go home and then i did end up seeing a still i think by the time i actually watched it on saturday so i was like whatever but yeah so i was i was like boo they done her dirty done her dirty because she by the edit and everything presented was gonna be the winner jan you were amazing you did great blah 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 we love you you're safe. And that Shit. face Ooh. crack look. I was like, ah, uh, I. <laughs> yep. I mean, ooh. <laughs> it I was can't. honestly. In terms of entertainment, it was everything. I was it. I was howling. I was howling when uh, I saw her face because, whoa, intense. I love, so intense. I love. I love the like widow talking about her face because she turns away from the dentist because you know they probably can't see it. 
But Widow saw it, and Widow was like, ooh, that, y'all, y'all didn't see her face, but that, I mean, and it's true. Like, I will, like, just now, like, I felt that way. I felt that. You put all this effort, you did a really fucking amazing job, you sang the shit out of this for this core, and then you did all of this amazing shit, and then it's like, oh, you're safe. Like, Like I would be like it would be like someone just literally stabbed me in the heart. Like, <laughs> like Well, Widow uh, Widow had a, an amazing confessional quote where she was like, You know that moment in a movie where the bad guy snaps? And I was like, yeah. Oh shit. Like <laughs> like like Widow was like, You could see Jan's face, but <laughs> like that's what happened when she turned away from the judges. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, oh, honey, honey. And then you could see, like, like the camera got an, an amazing shot of her backstage just standing there mm-hmm. when Gigi is informed of her third win. And I was like, okay. So, like, that's so, awkward. Okay, so I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to say it right now because I feel like it needs to be said. I know we're going to get into slash and our roles. And I know we got the, you know, it's, we're going long, but I feel like this needs to be said. Okay. Okay. I have a problem with this whole thing. Okay. There is something to be said about the choice. Okay. So Jan comes on first, kills it. Like, we can all agree she killed it, right? Right? Right. Okay. So, Gigi gets the, the next one, which is the kind of the express yourself, not express yourself, um, Papa Don't Preach, the, 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 like, the short, the black dress, and, or the black tube list, you know, or whatever. Right. You know, and she did a really great job with the one thing that we saw that she was having problems with in the, you know, choreography part. But what we didn't see in our pre-show was all the stuff that they did afterwards, where they do all the lifts and shit. That's some extra ass shit, and I call shade on that shit. If that if hers didn't have that stuff, I think Jan would have won. I don't think it had anything to do with the 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 performance that she gave her singing talent of Gigi. And her, her the choreography that she did on her own, a lot of it had to do with the the choreo- choreography that was given with her by her and her with her, her dancers. Because she's a little thing, petite little thing that can lift up and do all these fun things. I don't think anyone else got lifted. Did anyone else get lifted? I don't think anyone else got lifted. If I'm wrong, correct me. Like y'all can all see this. Like correct me if I'm wrong. But it. It felt intentional. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. It felt intentional. That's actually a really good point. I, um, (laughs) that's a really good point. I, when I watched the, um, the musical, uh, I watched it one other time before, um, the podcast today and after watching it a second time in my mind I thought no Gigi actually did win this um, but a big portion of it is because of the theatrics you're right Yeah. I mean she got lifted up she got to like flip over them I mean uh-huh. it was just more it was just more visually stunning and she got that is that's after- true she got choreographed the fucking backflip. I mean, that any girl that has anything that sticks out is going to have an edge. So she already has an edge. Even if she did terrible herself, the fact that she got lifted up and all these theatrics, she already has a plus one over everyone. But mm-hmm. then the fact that she she did a great job herself of performing and the arc of the episode saying that she was struggling in rehearsal. She didn't know if she could get it. So they showed her major growth and she killed it and she had theatrics. So it was like, 
draw. No one else could have won this. Mm. So, <laughs> I have thoughts about this. <laughs> of course. Well, no, because you are incredibly like bullseye accurate, David, to call out and be like, hold up. Bitch got extra choreography like that nobody else got. Everybody else got to stay on the ground. Everybody else had a couple of backup dancers, not a whole squad. So, like, where's the fairness in that? I'm wondering if, because it was Jamal Sims, and he probably gave feedback to the judges or to the producers who then talked in Ruth's ear. Rumors have it. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, because Jan was so good out the gate... That there was no, like, growth for her. Like, she just got it. Mm -hmm. Like, that that was taken into measurement. And because Gigi had to get out of her head and figure this stuff out. Like, mm -hmm. she had so much to overcome that that mattered more. Maybe. So. Hmm. That's a thought. That's Possibly. A thought. I, do, I do know as a, I was going to say, as a. Uh, also a choreographer, I do know that if there are actors that are struggling with the piece that you've already created, you do want to find ways to put them in their best light. So having her, you know, lifting her up and doing all these flip flips with her, it does allow her to dance less. She has less time to move, which means there's a um, less Prob there's a higher probability that um, she'll just do better if she dances less. Mm -hmm. And so you can take up counts by lifting her up and people, other people doing things for her. It does give her a better opportunity. So I can say as a choreographer, if the thing that you created for her doesn't work, you do want to try other things. And yeah. so that may be one thing that Jamal thought about. So that and, is a valid point. And I will say this, she did kill the the walk, the one thing that she did, that she was having issues with, like, she killed that. I will give her the props for that. The was awesome. Yeah. It worked really fucking well. It worked with the music. It worked with her track. And it, 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 it was really good. I, I will admit to that. Like, she got that, cause, and that is a very iconic Madonna, you know, ism. <laughs> you know, that, that one, like, step choreographing, probably Jamal Sims, probably choreographed I don't know, don't remember if it was, but like that was the thing, like I'm like, that was, she killed that mm -hmm. and when she did that I was like, ooh, okay, go ahead Gigi, you, you got it, like yay, good for you, but mm. yeah I'm gonna hold my thoughts for like towards <laughs> the end of, of this next segment speaking of which, are we ready to move on? Sure <laughs> Put the bass in your wall. All right, children, it is time for snaps and eye rolls, aka hits and misses, uh, the high points and the low points of the episode. Damon, what you got snaps for? Oh, okay. Well, actually, I give snaps for Jan and Jada. Um, both for their runway and their performance in the musical. Like, Jan, I think, showed re her, her chops, as, as, as Q has mentioned. Like, her, her skills were very much utilized in this performance. Um, her background and what have you was very much utilized. She did a really amazing job. She sang really well. She performed it really well. Um, stellar. She brought it out to the, brought it out the gate, and I feel bad that she didn't win this one. Um, so obviously, that's kind of where my mind is. I'm feeling a little salty about that. But I have to also give props to Jada. Um, like you mentioned earlier, like her look in in the Rusical was just very nice, and and I don't know, you know, I know that I'm probably sure they don't put it, put it, they get it to them, but she performed it really well. She gave me sexy, she gave me sultry, she gave me that erotica, and she she 
did what I wanted to see in that portion of Madonna. I got that from her. Um, I really did get that, and I really did like that. I liked the tricks that they did with her, and I liked her or uh, her um, her Michelle Visage impression. Um, you know, take, you know, it was obviously meant to be, it was very, it was a very dragged up version of a pretty dragged up version of Michelle Visage. <laughs> so it just, she kind of took, which I think is what I, when I think about this is they take a look of Michelle Visage and they drag it up, but Michelle was pretty much a lot of ways dragged up. So like you kind of have to ump it up another level. Right. So the big icon I thought was perfect. The bigger earrings, the higher hair, all of that stuff. It worked to her benefit, and she did a really great job. I'm so glad she chose that look because it looked really good on her. She's coming. She's coming out as the one to. I'm keeping an eye on. Mm. Like I wasn't at first, but I'm keeping an eye on her because she is doing surprisingly well. I agree. We're down to, I think, eight, and I think she has potential for top four. Mm hmm. So those are my snaps. All right, Q, what about you? What were some of your high points out of the episode? So um, the biggest high point for me was definitely just Jan. I mean, she, I, now I'm biased because I, I, you know, did study theater and I like singing and it's just, but it's so refreshing to have someone that can actually sing, you know, I mean, this is a rusical. So, and they had to, they all had to sing. So, or rap or do whatever. So this wasn't lip sync, you know, it wasn't a lip sync um, where they had, you know, a professional track behind you and you have to just act it out. So mm -hmm. this is a really difficult challenge, a very difficult challenge. And so Jan just really has once again established herself as being that queen who just is that all around good queen. I mean, she, like every episode, every, I mean, she just for the most part, just like her looks and her challenges, she's just steadily been on the top of her game and still game and still hasn't won a challenge yet. So yeah. um, for this episode, um, I just give snaps to Jan. Cause I think it's gotta be difficult for someone who knows that you are so talented and someone who wants to get tr critiques, who wants to get better. Um, and someone who everyone else sees as like a nice person and doing well in the challenges and not winning. So it's gotta be just so difficult to be that person on a show like Drag Race and know that you're doing a good job, but not winning any challenges. So mm -hmm. um, props to her for staying in there and not like pulling a carry yet and like just raining down blood and destruction <laughs> on everyone <laughs> yet. Uh, but for her, her sticking in there, um, that's the major snap. And so um, I have a mini snap to um, AOC. Oh, um, yeah. Because I was so excited to have her on the show. And she is clearly such a great representation of um, a congressperson that we really, that is really fighting for LGBTQ rights. And so for her to be on a um, a queer show in 2020, the year of a presidential election, um, I think is really, it's it's great to have that representation. So many snaps to ALC being on the show and like what a prime time year situation, everything just, I feel like um, it just made me really proud to have her on the show. I, I, could not disagree at all. Like, I think both of you, you know, are, are hitting the spots because I'm just like, it's just, it's Jan, 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 Jan. Mm -hmm. Like she by far is weirdly. And I, and I don't mean this to be negative or disparaging. She is the perfect package. Like she is poised. She has everything together. She's incredibly talented. Like she knows how to like bring a look together. Like she is delivering. 
I'm starting to get concerned because now we're getting down to like top eight and I think she has potential for top four. And I really would like to not have her turn into like a Nina West in that like she's so likable that like she doesn't get to the end. Do you know what I mean? Like like something uh -huh. weird happens and mm -hmm. it's not her fault, but the judges just get like that finicky, that picky that they're just like. Well, we know you've been doing great all along, and it's just, it's just, it's just so disappointing. The shoes. I mean, the shoes. Really? Yeah. The shoes. <laughs> Everything else was great. The shoes. You have to go home. Do you know what I mean? Like, just some bullshit like that. Like, that's the, that's the part that makes me just a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. So. We don't need another misogynality. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. yeah I, mean, I see the show, I see the show editing her into that. Her or maybe Heidi I see them editing her and her I see them trying to really form that narrative and it's only because she's so nice but on top of her being so nice and congenial she's just so fucking talented mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so moving okay. on Damon eye rolls who you who you roll on your eyes at girl <laughs> <laughs> I think we've mentioned it several times this episode <laughs> but my eye, my biggest fucking eye rolls are for Miss um, Widow's Runway. That was <laughs> Tim's laughing in the question. <laughs> it was, it was, it was bad. I mean, it was bad. I just the the the. Okay, I don't know if it was a two piece or a one piece. I don't really care at this point. It did not look good on her. Like, just point blank, period. It did not look good. It looked just, oh, the, the, the hair. She even calls it out, like, like, like first time in drag runway, um, first time in drag look. Mm -hmm. I mean, fact. Like, that, just that, you know, that wig I combined, the wig store, like that long ass wig, the, the top that looks like, like a, to, like a tank top from Sears and those ugly ass blue pants, blue star pants that, and, and it wasn't cut right. It didn't like, if you looked at the picture and then you looked at her and then you looked at the picture and you looked at her, it don't, it didn't look right on you. Mm -hmm. You should have picked something else. Like I get, you are a larger frayed woman. Mm -hmm. That was not a look for you. It, oh, oh it just, just, and and the, and the pants didn't look right. They were too high up on the waist or wherever. And and then like, I don't even want to talk about the shoe, but like just everything, just girl. Like this is season twelve, middle of the season, like runway. Like we need to do better than this because it just. Mm. What it, I, it was it was bad. What I'm hearing is it's season twelve, not season one. Because <laughs> that's what I thought of that runway outfit. I was like, oh honey. Yeah. If you had been in season one, like, you know, you still would have probably got the floor mopped, but but that would have been a more appropriate time in the history of mm -hmm. the show to pull that out, not yeah. now. Yeah. So. That just it oh y'all. Yeah. Anyway. That <laughs> Q. You got eye rolls for anybody? Mm -hmm. Any misses in the show? Um, so for me actually, I really enjoyed this episode. And one, I love Madonna. And Michelle Visage is who she is. You know, I mean, she's, you know, I, I mean, I do love Michelle. I think that uh, there weren't any, there wasn't anything specific that made me go, oh, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. um, except for whoever the people are that create the rusicals. Um, no, she because... better know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I don't think that <laughs> I don't think that they are good in general. In general, I I liked this because I like Madonna. 
but I don't think that like the way that it was conceived and the material they're giving the girls, the words and just, I just, de- I didn't really like the musical in and of itself. I only liked it because it was Madonna. Okay. Um, and so there have been so many, uh, I, I like the, like the share musical. I liked so much better. Um, you know, there's so many others that don't follow this one artist story arc as well that I've also loved. Um, mm-hmm. I liked the one they did with the Pitch Perfect, where they was kind of all a cappella, mm-hmm. and they all had little all lip sync. They all did lip syncs, and it was all a cappella. I loved that one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that the show has to do a better job of like creating material that is good because it's like give the girl something really to work with. If you have a talented girl, they'll figure it out. Like, Jan is amazing. She already can sing. So, yes, that works for her. For a girl that can't sing, that has to kind of talk, speak her way through something and make it work, give them words, give them ideas to make it easier for them. So, my major eye roll is just of the production of the musical. Like, mm-hmm. come on, man, it's 2020. Can we please get our shit together with this. Like, well, I mean, to be fair, Lucian Piani's on the outs. So, <laughs> pot kettle black, crazy bitch, whatever. Like, tal- talent is a thing. Sometimes it also comes with some baggage. So. I've I've kind of noticed that the staffing is not always up to par. Like there's been some online criticism that Todrick, God bless Todrick, love Todrick very much, love you girl, is on a lot in these more recent seasons because they perhaps don't have the pool of resources they used to because perhaps some bridges have been burned or something. I don't know. Lots mm-hmm. of speculation online. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of noticed, like, when they had the two music people there and Michelle introduces them, I was like, ooh, girl, that was, like, the biggest crickets moment in quite a while. Because <laughs> we got all these queens mm-hmm. going, who, who they? Like, like I, I, like, I was embarrassed. There was a part right. of me that was like, why were they even introduced? Because I still wasn't sure who the fuck they were or why they were there. No idea. Who that? <laughs> <laughs> so just get the musicals together, people. Get them together. Nice. Gary? Uh, so I'm going to drop the microphone on something, and uh, this is something that occurred to me while we were recording this tonight, and I'm just going to put this out there. Uh, my eye rolls are for, are for the possibly unsubstantiated, not yet proven, manufactured GG drama. Ooh. Here is my hypothesis. Oh, I can't do it. I'm having difficulty learning. It's difficult for me. Ah, I'm all stressed out. Knocks it out of the fucking park. (laughs) I'm watching you, girl. You did a 180. You did a fucking 180 reversal. Not doing well, having difficulty, not sure what's going to happen. Oh, it's almost perfection on the stage. Okay, where's that where's that stage sound effect? <laughs> I'm just thinking we've already seen this happen earlier in the season. I'm stressed. Okay. I'm not sure. Da 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 da. Perfect. Poised. Aren't you lovely? We love you. Five thousand dollars, girl. <laughs> really? Mm. Funny how that works out. Mm. In your favor. Again. Mm. So. <laughs> yes, girl. Yes. Mm, this tea. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Ooh, it's so scalding, funny. This... Scalding hot. Yes. So it's it's a cute funny story. We've got this stuff on the table because they were painting in the live in the kitchen, and this was one of the things that is like sitting up on our on our shelves. <laughs> yeah. it's a cute little teacup. Handy. Mm. 
Yeah. Bambi. Uh, yeah, I just it occurred to me when we were talking about how things went, and you guys and Damon, I think you were talking about like you know how she had you know done so well, and Q, I think you talked about like you know both of you were like, yeah, she nailed the steps. Like Jamal gave her this thing, she got the, and I agree. When she came up on stage and she got the footwork, I was like, damn, look at you. Yeah. Like, that is yeah. iconic. That's almost MJ, motherfucking Michael Jackson, moonwalk level, iconic dance kind of move. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. nailed it. Mm -hmm. But that's when it, it clicked and I went, now hold on a damn minute. I realize there's an edit, but I'm getting a little suspicious about this turnabout thing which Some goes mistake. back so to in my reference to that they well, i was gonna say it was in reference to this you know we saw britta not being able to do the roger rabbit and Girl. she still couldn't do the roger rabbit so who knows uh I would play the shade sound effect, but there's really not shade. It's the truth. It's it's the, all the oh, wait, tea, wait, honey. Need this. Yes, it's it's all all <laughs> all all the tea. Yeah, like yeah, she was she was like potato mashing and cabbage something and <laughs> trying to Roger Rabbit. Like I felt for her in the, in the edit because I'm watching her and I'm like, that's me. Like, I'm a short fat fuck and I don't think I could do the Roger Rabbit like I see myself in this moment doing a Brita or whatever the hell that is like I just you know and of course they, they do that beautiful cut into Jada who's like no girl just no <laughs> like you're not you're not doing it and it was so shady because it was like a person of color shading another person of color for not being able to pull off that dance. I was like, oh, they've they done you wrong. They've done you wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so my eye rolls are for the possibly uh, questionable authenticity of the, I can't do this. And then, you know, and that's not to say that, that Gigi isn't talented because Lord knows mm -hmm. she is. She's becoming, you know, that other juggernaut you have to watch out for because she's always going to deliver the look. Like, mm -hmm. that she, unless mm -hmm. something weird happens, she's always going to be able to do that. She can sing. She, you know, uh, can act. Like, I mean, she can be funny. So, I mean, you know, and she's fucking twiggy. So, I mean, you know, she's got a lot of things going for her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm getting a little concerned about the 21-year-old who is, like, perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Aquaria, anyone? <gasps> Girl. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. I could not <laughs> hit that button fast enough. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ooh, time is running out. I mean, Gigi has three wins. And... That who um who who someone else has uh two wins. Hold on, I've got I actually was just on this, so I'm on the Wikipedia page. So um so Gigi has three. Mm -hmm. Um Sherry Pie has two. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some drama. Mm -hmm. Jada has Jada has one. And Widow has one. Mm hmm So isn't isn't it interesting that Jackie Cox, who I think is doing well, still hasn't won a challenge yet? Yep, she's been high for most ev almost every week except for this week. She was actually considered low this week. Um, <laughs> of because of the you know six, like they kept her on stage. No, oh, I know. Sorry. Yeah, I know what you're. I know what page you're looking at. What you're reading, but just the way you said it, I was like, "Well, she's no Lagaja Estraja." Like, I don't know if I'd say you know <laughs> that she's high. I mean, I ain't gonna yuck no yum. Like, if she into herb, all the more power to you, girl. You know, come on. Ryan. I thought Persians did did mm -hmm. opium, not not <laughs> not the green, but you know. <laughs> But I know what you mean, Dan. I was just, wondering what you're laughing at. I'm sorry, it just tickled okay, me. But like, now I know. <laughs> well, David's referencing a, 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 it's on Wikipedia, I think. Like they they rank 
and they do this beautiful chart and it's mm-hmm. all color coded and they basically say like who was high and who was low like you know and all this kind of stuff and their ranking and the winnings and stuff so it's quite fun so yeah all right so that being said uh that's pretty much the end of the show kid um I don't think I've laughed and had this much fun in, in quite a while. So uh, mm-hmm. part of that is, is thanks to having you on, Q. Um, if you would like to uh, get in touch with us, there's plenty of ways to do that. You can go to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can send us an email, uh, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You could leave us a voicemail message at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Social media, listen, kids, it's really easy. You just type in Cubs Out Loud, one word, C-U-B-S-O-U-T-L-O-U-D. Um, if you would like to join the Entourage social chat, uh, that's tinyurl.com slash col, sorry, slash telegram hyphen coltr. Uh, if you would like some fabulous merchandise that has the Cubs Out Loud logo on it or Cubs Out Loud drag race, like that beautiful baby blue t shirt that Damon happens oh. to be wearing right now for COL drag race, um, <laughs> or you could get yourself a nice little, uh, ooh, little. You know, mug Little here. Tea cup? Yeah, for some for some lovely mm, mm, this tea. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes. Mm. Um yes, I've had this for a little while. It's a, it's delicious. It. Yes, it's a lovely frosted mug. It's it's fun. It's got the little Cubs Out Loud logo on it with a crown and everything, honey. Uh so you could get that there. You could become a patron at patreon.com slash cups out loud for as little as a dollar a month. You can help support us with what we're doing here at the podcast. You can help promote us online, rate us on iTunes, give us a five star review, please. Uh subscribe on Google Play Podcast. And if you would like to get in touch with us, Damon, where would they reach out to find you? If you would love like to spill some tea with me, please check me out. I am Theater Cub79 on most bear related sites and facebook or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter and if you would like to get in touch with me you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gare bear 73 that's g-a-r-b-e-a-r 73 q where people gonna find your sexy ass at well (laughs) uh, my only fans no um (laughs) um, so uh not yet we'll see this keeps up, uh, no, but yeah. uh, I love but, you. You're like, if Miss Coronavirus like just keeps this shit up, COVID nineteen gonna make new revenue streams possible for me. All right, let's get into all the internets. Come on, Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> so um, I, you can find me. Uh, under the um, handle Q's Massage Studio, QS Massage Studio on Instagram, Twitter, um, under Q's Massage Studio for Facebook. I'm also under Sacramento Massage under TikTok as well. So oh. come on, join the join the um, the Generation Zs and the Millennials with me. <laughs> I... Girl, you are the first person I know of that has a TikTok. I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I, I don't know how I want to feel. About I'm trying that. to keep up with the children. They are the future. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them letting children. them lead the way right now. I'm just gonna, yeah. Pop the corn and feed the children. <laughs> All right. So that being said, uh, we're gonna wrap up the show and exit to uh, the patriotically appropriate because it is a voting year. Get out and vote, bitches. Uh, America by RuPaul. Like you too. I'm, 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 I'm American, American, American. I am American, American. The red, white, and-